uh, that we have voice over. Uh, they say the devil is in the detail, so I think we now have connection to the internet as well, and I welcome everyone watching on Facebook. Let us now confess our, uh, our sins. Dear friends in Christ, here in the presence of Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, so that we may obtain forgiveness by His infinite goodness and mercy. We confess to God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, for our own grievous fault. Wherefore we pray God to have mercy upon us. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us all our sins, and deliver us from evil. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. The Almighty and Merciful Lord, grant unto you pardon and remission of all your sins, time for true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord's name be praised. A reading from 1 John. If we receive human testimony, 
the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Jesus prayed for his disciples. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine and I have been glorified in them and now I am no longer in the world but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, that they may be as one, as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except 
the one destined to be lost so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. Give thanks to the Lord for his glorious gospel. Praise to Christ our Lord. One hundred years ago, last Sunday, a girl was born into this world. She was the fourth of six children. Her parents named her Sophie, Wisdom. And by the end of her life, it was that meaning of her name that made her see truth that allowed her to embrace life in its truest forms and that at the same time cost her her life, only to find it in abundance. Sophie grew up in an equally open and religious household. Her father was a liberal politician, her mother a former deaconess, it was therefore no wonder that Sophie would be baptized quickly on the 10th of July, 1921, at St. Michael's Lutheran Church in the Swabian town of Forchtenberg. The baptism established a band that would be stretched at times, but would never break, not even at the darkest hours of her short life not even at the end. It is what baptism does. It unites us with God in an indestructible way, in a way so close and intimate, nothing can come between it, between it, even if we run the other way. And the other way, Sophie would run, at least, initially. Sophie's elder sister and brother 
were blinded early on by the creeping darkness of the early 1930s and were overcome by the temptations of the Hitler Youth, all to the consternation of their parents. There were loud arguments, especially between Sophie's brother Hans on the one hand and their father Robert on the other. And yet, even the sternly voiced warnings of Robert couldn't stop the children. Sophie also succumbed to the enticement of the Nazis and became a glowing and ardent follower of Hitler, replacing the worship of the one true God with the worship of the Führer. Idolatry had taken over. Sophie ran the wrong way, hard. But she didn't get far. Maybe her father's foresight blossomed in her heart eventually. Maybe she witnessed things that, she did, that didn't sit right with her. Maybe she just grew out of it. Whatever it was, God used it to pull her back into the loving embrace of God. God opened her eyes. God planted wisdom, deep wisdom, into her heart. And God used that wisdom to bring about truth around, in, and through her. Sophie Scholl, her brother Hans, who in the end also had experienced a divine intervention, and a few student friends co-founded the White Rose Resistant Movement based at the University of Munich. Hans and Sophie were Lutherans. Fellow students Willy Graf and Professor Kurt Huber were Roman Catholics. And White Rose co-conspirator Alexander Schmorell was Russian Orthodox. Only Christoph Probst was not a church member, at least not yet. And at a time when ecumenism wasn't really invented yet, they banded together across denominational divides to proclaim Jesus as the one and only Lord and to name the terror of the Nazis for what it was, evil, pure, unadulterated evil. They mailed pamphlets. They painted anti-Nazi propaganda on walls. They distributed leaflets. On the 18th of February, 1943, a university janitor caught them in the act. What followed happened quickly. Within days, most of the members of the group were arrested. Sophie and Hans and their friend Christoph Probst were sentenced to death on the 22nd of February 1943 in a mock trial to be executed that very same day. Lutheran pastor Karl Alt was called to meet with the siblings. Pastor Alt reported he met two young saints who lacked fear of death, were certain of the work they had done, and trusted that their death would not be the end. What they asked for in their last hours was to celebrate communion as a foretaste of that heavenly banquet and as food for the journey, for that unspeakably short and hard journey that lay ahead of them that very day. And so they celebrated the Lord's Supper, hearing Psalm 90 and 1 Corinthians 13, and being joined by the church that was and is and is to come. Christoph Probst was ministered to by a Roman Catholic prison chaplain who baptized him, joining him moments before his execution 
like Sophie and the other members of the White Rose, to God in a link that no evil and no death can break, a link that pulled him into life, pulled him through dying and in death into the loving embrace of our triune God. I'm sharing this story with you today because, yes, it was Sophie Scholl's 100th birthday last Sunday. I'm sharing this with you also because in today's epistle from 1 John, the author inextricably links faith and witness and life. Faith, true faith in God, must lead to a witness which, which testifies to the unparalleled lordship of Jesus Christ. And that testimony will lead to life, life abundant for each and every one of us, as much as life for all of our neighbors, whoever they are, whatever they are, even our non-human neighbors. Faith is not just a private matter. Faith changes us and pushes us into the world as witnesses so that, this, that the certainty experienced by Sophie Shaw as she faced her death, that certainty can then stand up to evil, injustice, and war, and it will become intrinsic to our identity as well. But first and foremost, I'm sharing this story with you today because this morning, we baptized Olivia. It was a celebration that wrapped us all into the adorable cuteness of a baby, and so it should have. There is nothing more beautiful than a baby, and we should be thankful for this wonderful new life. It was, therefore, good to forge in baptism that link of love between Olivia and her creator. But baptism is no insurance policy. The Christian life can be hard when we encounter evil in its many incarnations. There is no guarantee that Olivia's life will be easy or successful in the ways we define success because of her baptism. And yet, if we remember the prophet Micah's call to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God, then grace and wisdom and love and life will take hold of us in an abundance that neither we or Olivia nor indeed Sophie Shaw could ever imagine. What we proclaimed this morning as we poured water over Olivia and what Sophie's steadfastness and faithfulness affirm are these truths. God's wisdom is stronger than evil. God's love is stronger than hate. And God's resurrection life is stronger than death.
Let us proclaim our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save us, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And make thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. Because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only Thou, O God. Who can make thee our hearts with me And take not Thy Holy Spirit from us. O God, the King of glory, who hast exalted Thine only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph unto Thy kingdom in heaven, we beseech thee, leave us not comfortless, but send to us thine Holy Ghost to comfort us and exalt us unto the same place whither our Saviour Christ is gone before, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. I invite your prayers and thanksgivings at this time, either aloud or in the silence of your hearts. And as we pray, we'll lift up to God's heavenly throne the people of India, Yemen, Afghanistan, Syria, Iraq, Myanmar. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for all those who have asked for our prayers and those who need our prayers 
and among them Jeremy, Pat, Ted, Hugh, Pat. We pray for all those who have died, those we love and see no more, and also Charlotte, Jane, and Avril. We give thanks for the church throughout the world, for saints past, present, and yet to come. We give thanks for Sophie and Hans Scholl, Alexander Schmorell, Christoph Probst, and all the members of the White Rose Resistance Movement. We give thanks for the baptism of Olivia and pray that she may walk her life's way in the grace of God. And we lift up ourselves and all those things that are on our minds and all those people in our hearts. Light in our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy, defend us from all perils of, and dangers of this and every night for the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us exchange a sign of peace.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. I ask you thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and at all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through thy most dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who after his most glorious resurrection manifestly appeared to all his apostles and in their sight ascended up into heaven to prepare a place for us, that where he is, thither we might also ascend and reign with him in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and mag magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory and thanksgiving be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who by his own oblation of himself once offered, made a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take Eat. This is my body. It is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee the memorial thy son hath commanded us to make having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same and looking for his coming again with power and great glory and we, thine unworthy servants, beseech thee, most merciful Father, to hear us and to send thy Holy Spirit upon us and upon these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that being blessed and hallowed by his life-giving power, they may become the body and blood of thy most dearly beloved Son, to the end that all who shall receive the same may be sanctified both in body and soul and preserved unto everlasting life. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant, by, by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we humbly offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, beseeching thee that all we who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be fulfilled 
with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Please stay in your seats. I will come to you. You will receive the consecrated bread. Receiving communion in one kind is full participation in the sacrament. For all those watching at home and online, please pray with us and pray for yourself that the fullness of God's grace may be with you always. Amen. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever.
And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the love and knowledge of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost be with you and remain with you always. Amen.